Welcome to another episode of the UX Portfolio Series. In this video, I'm going to share the other 10 UI design detail, visual design detail tips with you so that you can polish the visual design in your UX project and make sure they look right. If you missed the other one, no worries, I have a link up here and in the description down below. And now let's just get started and roll the intro. <music> Everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Today's video is fairly straightforward, I have to say. Another 10 tips on visual design, UI design that you should take a look at, pay attention to, make sure that you get the visual design right in your UX project. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. <sighs> tip number one, use too much space. This tip is mostly geared towards junior designers. When you design, try to just use twice as much space as you think you would everywhere around everything. You can always start with a lot of space and then reduce the space if you need to. Another thing is that you need to get used to use a lot of space and seeing a lot of space in your project. Space is actually a good thing. You don't have to feel like you have to cram everything into the one screen. The UI should never feel crowded or too tight. And in those good designs, good apps, you barely see that happen. If they happen, there must be a good reason for it. Tip number two, use a better font. Font typeface typography is a visual language that exists in letter forms. A good font choice is very important because perceptually, all your products, all your designs are going to have text in them. You can find a lot of free fonts on the internet. Just Google them. Don't know what to choose from, what to pick from, how to identify good font. Here's my recommendation. You can start with SF Pro from Apple or you can start with Open Sans from Google Font. They are both modern sans serif typefaces. They tend to be versatile and legible and clear, crisp. You're not gonna go too wrong with those. You can literally have a side-by-side -side comparison between the default font that you use. Maybe it's Arial or Avenir. Compare that design against the one in Open Sans, let's say. You will see the difference. Open Sans will look nicer. It will just give a boost to your visual design overall. Tip number three, use the right number for rounded corners. If you notice, a lot of elements nowadays have rounded corners. They're not gonna be sharp anymore. And actually, if you think about it, things in our physical life, there are barely anything that are super sharp that we use every day, that we touch, that we feel. Wait, what about knives? Yes, knife is sharp, it's meant to be sharp, it's sharp on purpose because you use it to cut things but you're not going to touch the blade with your fingers. Oh. If you know you should be using rounded corner, the next question is, what is the corner radius that you should be using? Because essentially you don't want to use anything too small or too big. So a nice number to start with is probably 12. You can dial it up or down depending on the other elements in your UI, the proportion between elements. Adjust the number accordingly for a more holistic or cohesive look and feel. Tip number four, use soft shadow if you ever use drop shadow in any of your elements make sure the drop shadow is soft soft means it's not too dark and it's not too crisp which means you might want to tone down the opacity or make sure the luminance of the shadow is low and bump up the blur value to maybe 8 10 12 even 20 to really give a soft feel if you have dark and crisp shadows it tend to look more outdated and unrealistic tip number five Use a proper wide offset shadow. This is related to the position of the shadow because you can set the X offset and the Y offset. Depending on where you put it, the shadow will be landing on different place in relation to the actual element. There are a lot of similarity between the digital world and the physical world, and the shadow is one of them. Think about the real life, the sun is the global source of lighting, or the moon too. But either way, the light source is from the sky, so everything is lit above. Which means in the digital world, we should have a similar familiarity. Because if it's off, then you will feel something is odd about it. If you don't know why, that could be one of the reasons. So if you have a drop shadow for an element, make sure the shadow is a little bit below the actual element. So that as if the light source is from above the element. So it conforms to the conventional understanding of how objects are being lit. Tip number six use softer color. In this modern UI design world, 
The color choice and color usage are actually pretty consistent from app to app. They tend to be more on the softer side, more pastel like. In most of the app, you don't see much very, very bright red, bright green, bright colors, more vibrant color. Instead, you will see less saturated colors that are more easier on eyes. Once your app design has a softer color palette, it also improves the usability because a user can use your app for a longer time without eye fatigue, let's say. So that's one example of UI and UX design are interconnected. I should have made another video on choosing the right color for your UX projects. I have link up here and description down below. I highly recommend you to check that out. Tip number seven, use high quality, high contrast photographs. If you plan to overlay text, especially white text on the top of a photo, if the photo you have doesn't have enough contrast, your text will likely be lost in the photograph. And if you look at other apps or other websites, why would that look so good? They have also have white text against the uh, image background. It's maybe because they actually designed the layout of that element first. So like the designer want to put the text here and have that background. So they have a rough sketch of what the background picture might be like. And then they shoot the photograph based on the design, the wireframe not the other way around. If you are a junior designer or you design a student at school, you might find yourself looking for pictures online to fit the purpose for your designs. You might try to look for photos to put into the background which has text on top. Many times that won't work because the photo was not yours and you don't plan to have it. Everything is much more like an afterthought. So what my work is, for example, one, you find high contrast photos. Two, you manipulate the photo a little bit in Photoshop to make sure that the contrast is there. So make sure the place that you want to put your text on is dark enough. Or three, you just use a vignette. And four, you just have a layer of light shade of gray in between the photograph and your text. Tip number eight. Use transition in your prototypes. This maybe is the next level of visual design because we're getting into prototyping a little bit. If you ever prototype, you don't want to flash between two screens. I know in some of the prototyping app, there is just a button and a link to the next screen. So everything is flashing. And in fact, in reality, apps never flash. If they do, many times they're probably inferior apps. And if you make a prototype and you want to showcase it in your portfolio, make sure to include proper transitions. Whether it's slide left, right, up, down, choose one and make sure to have a reason to back your decision because that might come up in an interview. Tip number nine, add a simple tap feedback. This is another more advanced thing to do. Essentially what I'm saying is that when you were designing an interaction between two screens, how do you get from screen A to screen B? You tap certain things, what is the tap target? And then what is the feedback when you tap on that target? Adding a simple tap feedback on the top will just instantly make your app feel more alive. And the feedback itself after any interaction is very important in UX design. That's something that you actually need and should consider, especially if you want to go beyond the two static screens. Tip number 10, take screenshots and learn from the great designs. When you're using those fantastic apps, you can totally take a screenshot of those if you see something that you can borrow from. For example, let's say Pinterest has rounded corners. You can take a screenshot, bring that screenshot into your Figma or Sketch file and actually measure what the corner radius is and use that in your design. Or maybe if you think the layout, the font size of Airbnb app is pretty nice, take a screenshot, put it in your Sketch file, look at what the font size is and maybe that is font size that you want to use for your next project. Ooh, those are the 10 tips. What do you guys think? Does that help? Does everything make sense? I have properly set up the chapters for this video, so rewind to any of the tips if you need to. And now, of course, the bonus content that you have been waiting for. Bonus content. I'm more than happy to take a look at your portfolio and give you some feedback, whether it's on UX design or visual design. Your choice, you pick one. And all you have to do is one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, leave in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your portfolio link to my email, which you can find on the file tab in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know you have left that comment. And then I will take a look at your portfolio, give you some feedback and a shout out in the next video. Good luck to you all on your next portfolio iteration, future internships, 
and full-time jobs. That is it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I will greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers!